All right, guys, it reads, which of the following is the most likely cause for this patient's condition? Is it A, silent mutation? Is it B, point mutation? Is it C, nonsense mutation? Is it D, missense mutation? Or is it E, frame shift mutation? So anytime you see something like this, obviously this mutation, they're talking about the, it's DNA mutations and um, you know it's a biochemistry kind of a topic. So the question reads, a four-year-old male with recurrent respiratory infections completed genetic testing which revealed a mutation that coded for the transmembrane chloride channels. From the testing data, the young man has 130 base pairs as compared to the expected 132 base pairs. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's condition? So really to answer a question like this, you have to know the types, the types of mutations. Okay, the types of mutations. And really, there's two main categories, and then you'll just break one of those down in, into a little bit more. So you have the point mutations, okay? Point mutations and frame shift mutations. Now, <clears throat> so essentially the point mutations, and, and to get, give even more of a broader view of, of what we're talking about here, mutations in DNA. So we have DNA, makes RNA, which makes the uh, protein, right? And so say we have CTC, and then that's three prime, five prime, and then five prime. CTC makes GAG, and then that's gonna be the protein uh, glutamic acid, okay, glutamate. So <clears throat> if you have a defect, say in the T, or it changes, right? Uh, so it's changed out. So then the CTC is actually CA. You know, the T is replaced by an A, and that's a CAC, which gets into, when it goes to RNA, becomes, it becomes GUG, which then it no longer is glut glutamate or glutamic acid. The GUG is actually valine. So a change way back up here in the mutation in the DNA had a protein effect, right? Instead of glutamic acid, it became valine. Okay, so that's from 30,000 feet away. So you're gonna have to get, you're gonna see a question like this where they're gonna give you some type of clue. And in this one, this is the big clue right here. But if you understand the types of mutations and how to categorize them, I think you'll see enough problems where you can kind of blow through this area on your step exam. <clears throat> so when it comes to point mutations, I want you to break this down into silent versus nonsense versus uh, missense mutations, okay? So point mutations are actually broken down into silent mutations, nonsense mutations, and missense mutations. So let's, over here, I'm gonna, we're gonna look at, say what normal, normal is, okay? And let's just say we had uh, the base pair TTC, and that's at the DNA level. And then at the RNA level, when it gets translated down or, whatever, or whatnot, it becomes A, A, G, right? T becomes an A, <coughs> excuse me, and the C becomes a G. And then that becomes lysine, okay, at the protein level. And a silent mutation is if you change the third base pair, it would not change the amino acid or a protein, okay? Like this. So TTC, all right? If we took TTT and changed the third base pair from a, from a C to a T, okay? If I changed it from a C to a T, when it went to the RNA level, it becomes AAA, right? And AAA is still lysine. So even though we changed the third base pair, you did, you did not change the amino acid, or, you know? So <clears throat> they call that a silent mutation. So when it comes to nonsense mutations, you always hear the thing saying, uh, you know, stop the nonsense, right? Stop the nonsense. That's because when you change, when you, in a nonsense mutation, the, you change a, the change results in an early stop codon, okay? You get the stop codons, which are UAA, UAG, and UGA. So in this situation, if normal was TTC, and instead of this first T being a T, we made it an A, so it becomes, it would be ATC we started with. Well, that goes down into UAG, which is what? UAG is a stop codon. 
So again, a nonsense mutation results in a stop codon, okay? And you'll see a question that uses the nonsense mutations where they'll compare somebody that has, normally you should have 130, 80, 180 base pairs, and this person only has 110. Well, there must have been an early stop codon in there uh, to, to, to mess that up. And then the last one here is going to be a missense. Now, missense, they call it, you can also break this down into conservative versus non-conservative. And really what that means is a conservative says is if I change from the second T to a C and then that change to a AGG and then that change to arginine. Well, arginine is somewhat similar to lysine, right? They're, say, both acidic or whatnot. Um, if they're similar to it, it's conservative. But if it changes it to something, you know, Missen says, look, if I change, if I change it not to a C, but to say a G, TGC, so from TTC to TGC, and then that would change it to a totally different amino acid that's not even close. You know, say one's polar, one's nonpolar, there's a big difference. They call that a non-conservative. But anyways, it's in the category of missense mutation. If you change the amino acid to something totally different, okay? Um, I want you to remember this, hemoglobinopathies, okay? Hemoglobinopathies, anytime you see, um, okay, that's normal, hemoglobin, um, I think it's that S, and I'm trying to think of what the, uh, in hemoglobin, uh, C, you know, like sickle cell, all that kind of stuff. I want you to, th if you see any of this stuff, any time that you see they start playing around with this um, cathode, anode, and you see those pictures, um, again, the cathode, and you see a lot of the questions like this, is, ne is a negatively charged, there's a starting point, and then they, they send stuff off and they'll say, oh, it only got so far, okay, that's hemoglobin A, a hemoglobin S, um, that's a sickle cell, and C. And so all they're saying is, well, how come this guy, this hemoglobin S, didn't travel as far um, to, the, to the anode or whatever like that? And really what that is is <clears throat> the hemoglobin A, okay, the normal, it's going to travel, you know, it has a, the way it's charged, it's going to be attracted to this anode, right? It's going to go in that direction uh, like it should. But this this guy right here is, in you know, instead of it being the normal, say, amino acid, that it's the the normal the the normally in the sickle cell, the valine is replaces the the valine replaces the negatively charged glutamic acid, right? Um, and so since it replaced the negatively charged, so it's not as negatively charged per se, and therefore it doesn't race to this guy as much, and that's why he's kind of say slowed down per se. And then when it comes to the hemoglobin with the, the, the C, the lysine, I think it's lysine, um, is substituted for the um, uh, glutamic acid. And so it's more positively charged. So if this guy's more positively charged, the, uh, the lysine, then he's not going to be exactly running toward this anode in any 100 miles an hour. So that's why he's even slower. So anytime, okay, long story short, without even memorizing that, anytime you see any of this, this um, electrophoresis stuff, you better be thinking the hemoglobinopathies and you better be thinking missense mutation because all they did was here was a normal guy. <clears throat> they replaced a guy out of that. You know, this, the glutamic acid got replaced by by valine here and lysine here, and these guys aren't as the preferred charge to be running toward the anode, and that's why they're a little bit slower, per se. Slower, heavier, you know, different size, whatever. Um, but anytime you see this on a test question, the cathode stuff, be thinking missense mutation, okay? They changed one piece of it, and it doesn't go there as fast, okay? So right now we have types of mutations. We have the point mutations, which are the silent, meaning nothing really changed. We have the nonsense, which led to a stop codon. And then we have the missense saying I changed one guy out and it could be something very similar or it could be something very opposite. And you're gonna be thinking hemoglobinopathies and you're gonna be thinking anything to do with electrophoresis. And then the other one we're talking about is the frame shift. And that's where you either insert or delete. Okay, you either insert or uh, delete a base pair 
And so that actually, you know, and then it affects everything from that point forward. I mean, let's think about this. So in DNA, if I had uh, CTC, 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 and, and say this was like, say, normal, and then it went to the RNA, and that was GAG, GAG, right, when it got translated out, <clears throat> and that's, and that's uh, glutamic acid or glutamate, but in a frame shift mutation, I'm either adding something in or taking something out. Um, and let's just say I threw something in there. Okay, say I threw in an extra C right there. Well, that means instead of it, it would be GAG here, but then it would be GGA, GGA from that point forward, right? From that point forward, everything's all messed up, right? It's a frame shift. Either I put something in there or I took something out. Um, so instead of it being glutamate, 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 um, it's like glutamate and then GGA is, I think I'm gonna say glycine or something like that, but who, who, who cares, right? It's just something different, right? And the difference is normally, and this is how you're gonna remember how to do a frame shift, is normally everything's divided by three, right? But when you added something in or took something away, it's no longer divisible by three, okay? Always keep that in mind. That's just an easy way to kind of do it. So back to this question, it reads, a four-year-old man with recurrent respiratory in uh, infections completed genetic testing, which revealed a mutation that coded for transmembrane chloride channels. From the testing data, the young man had 130 base pairs as compared to the expected 132. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the patient's condition? Well, you know, they wouldn't be giving me this if it was a silent mutation. Because a silent mutation, nobody cares because nothing changed, okay? I say no, nothing, nobody cares, but it's not going to cause this. Nonsense, you know, a stop mutation would have happened a lot earlier on, and it doesn't really, you know, 130 to 132 is not really a big difference, so I'm not getting too excited about that. You know, missense goes back with, I'm thinking hemoglobinopathies. When I say missense, that, that's where my mind goes. Are there other ones? Yes. Um, <clears throat> but this guy's got, it's, they're obviously talking cystic fibrosis, and I don't like to categorize too many diseases according to these things other than the hemoglobinopathies. Um, but I don't get too excited about the missense. I'm definitely not excited about the silent, not excited about the nonsense. When it comes to frame shift, remember, it's either divided by three or not. At least that's how I approach it. Was something added or taken away? Um, as compared to the expected, so the expected was 132. Now I can go 132 divided by three, and it comes out nice and, nice and uh, even per se, right? So the expected was 132. <clears throat> this guy's got 130 base pairs. You know, that's not divisible by three. So it appears that either something was, uh, you know, obviously it's less, 130 base pairs. So it seems like something was taken away, uh, perhaps. Something was deleted, which would give me a, a frame shift. And that's where I would go. I would obviously go with frame shift on this one based on that. Because here, here's your only the only four types you got to know for the exam. In point mutation, you're going to break that down. So you, you really can't think point mutation. It's too broad. Silent mutation, would have, nothing would have happened, right? Because it would have gave you the same type of uh, amino acid. It would not give you this recurrent sinus infections, which is you know, cystic fibrosis and stuff. Nonsense would have gave a stop mutation, but it would have happened, seemed like it would have happened a lot earlier on, not, a, not within only one base pair difference, okay? Uh, so I'm not, I'm not overly excited about that one. You know, a missense mutation would have been something <clears throat> totally uh, drastic, but you know, it, it doesn't really give me this. This type of information doesn't exactly support this. Again, I'm only for me on this exam. I'm going to lean toward missense mutation when they're talking about hemoglobinopathies, sickle cell uh, things like that. Um, and if I ever see any any of this electrophoresis stuff, I'm j that's why this is my normal one. And then they replaced, again, in the heat and globin S, they replaced the nonpolar valine, replaces the negatively charged glutamic acid, therefore it decreases the polarity. And then with the C, hemoglobin C, the lysine is substituted for, uh, substitutes for the um, uh, glutamate, and lysine's charge, um, lysine's a positively charge, which moves slowly toward the anode, and that's why it's, it's a lot less. Um, but it does not explain this question down here. Because um, again, missense, I'm going, I'm going with hemoglobinopathies. So the answer for this one, 
Expected would have been divisible by three. This guy's not. Uh, I'm thinking it's a frame shift. Something was added or deleted, and then cystic fibrosis is in that category. Um, again, I don't like to put the diseases in these categories because there, there's a lot. There, there are some overlaps. But the best answer for this one is going to be frame shift. Your takeaway learning point is I want you to know the types of mutations: silent, nonsense, missense, and frame shift. Hope it helps, guys.